Welcome guys to the Engineerable channel. I'm going to be showing you how to upgrade the Nerf Pro Gelfire Mythic to increase the FPS and shoot harder and further. I'll be replacing the stock spring with a slightly longer spring. Keep watching to find out how to make your lethargic Nerf Gel Blaster much more awesome. The first thing you're going to need is a number one or number zero Phillips screwdriver that is long enough to fit inside these deep screw holes. The battery is removable, so we're going to go ahead and take that off first, then the hopper, and then the front muzzle flash hider, whatever it is, it's definitely not a silencer, it just makes things louder. All right, let's get down to it and take out all these screws. I got tired of this and used a drill, but you don't want to use a drill to reassemble because you can snap the screws. The screws are different lengths depending on the location, so you need to make sure that whatever location you remove a screw from, you need to put it back in the same spot. The gearbox is also screwed onto the housing using these screws. These screws are 11.6 millimeters long. This one back here is a long one, 19.6 millimeters long. So now I can lift up the gearbox and get the stock out. Okay, I'm gonna take this top off here and when you go to put it back together, you want to make sure that the wires are all routed the same and you're not going to pinch anything. Here's the top of the hopper feed neck, which the hopper attaches into. And then there's the lower part of the hopper feed neck that's like a funnel. And this is a T-piece down here. So when I do a UV tracer mod, I'm going to put some UV LEDs inside this T-piece right here to light up the glow gel so you can see where you're shooting at night. This front screw here is 11.5, screw right here, also 11.5, screw right here is 11.5. And these two screws are smaller in diameter and shorter at nine millimeters. I wanna record that because these screws are all different sizes. Okay, so the gearbox does have some snaps right here, right here. So push those snaps in and lift that gearbox out. Cylinder is spring-loaded, so be careful when you take this apart. Stuff can go flying. Okay, not too bad, not too bad. And of course, to keep things interesting, they did not use the same size gears as the Surge Gel Blaster uses or most of the other small pistol gel blasters use. They use gears that are bigger. So my conclusion here is that Nerf is using some non-standard proprietary gears such that we won't be able to find replacement gears for the Nerf Gel Blaster if the gears happen to strip. But hopefully they're using larger gears with bigger teeth and so they should be more durable and last longer. If we take the barrel off, carefully remove the springs so it doesn't shoot out. And one thing I wanted to check is can we install a stronger spring in here? For example, this is a Gen 2 Gel Blaster Surge and it shoots at about 175 FPS, which is a better speed for this size pistol blaster. And basically you're limited by the motor strength and the gear strength because at some point if it's too strong in here, it's just going to strip these things out. Once you get to 200 FPS or so, you really need to go to larger airsoft standard style gears like the rifles. So the question is, can we use this larger, stronger spring that came out of the Gel Blaster Surge in this Nerf blaster. So this is the Gel Blaster Surge spring, and this is the Nerf spring. And what you'll notice is that the Gel Blaster Surge spring is about one and a half coils longer. So we know that the Nerf Gel Fire shoots about the same FPS as the original Gel Blaster, or sometimes a little bit lower. So if we use this spring in there from the Generation 2 surge with these stronger gears it should be no issue to have a little bit higher firepower in the nerf let's compare the spring dimensions here's the nerf spring dimensions the nerf spring is 75 millimeters long it's 14 millimeters in diameter and the wire thickness is approximately 1.11 the gel blaster surge gen 2 spring is about 88.4 millimeters long 14 millimeters in diameter 
and 1.11 millimeters wire diameter. So these springs are very similar with the exception to the overall length. So putting this longer spring in there is going to preload the piston and it's going to apply more force. It's going to have a higher potential energy and when released the kinetic energy will be greater and the gel ball should shoot faster. While I'm in here and putting this back together, I'm going to put a tiny bit of lube on the inside of this cylinder wall. I use a super lube synthetic grease for greasing up the gearboxes. Okay, when you put the cylinder back inside, you need to make sure that it's hooked onto the spring like that. And then slide this back in here. Put the barrel back on. Helps hold things down a little bit. I'm going to put a little bit more grease on these gears. They already had some on there, but when I was touching it, some came off, so better to add some more. Yes, you can put too much grease in the gearbox, but it'll just kind of spin itself out. Adding some grease to the walls that the cylinder and the pistons slide in is also good. Now I'm going to put the longer spring in that comes from the Gel Blaster Surge Gen 2. I think the Gen 3 probably has the same spring and then put the cylinder down in place and get this spring compressed. And then use the barrel to hold everything down. Okay, it can be easier to put the cylinder in first before putting the gears. One last thing to check to make sure is, is the spring on the anti-reverse latch properly positioned. Like that. Make sure the wires are routed through the slot here. And then put the top of the gearbox on. Fortunately, the gearbox snaps together. So once it snaps on, you don't have to worry about it popping open. Let's put those screws back in the gearbox. The smaller screws go back in the motor area. I forgot to route these wires through this tunnel back here. And don't forget to always back up the screws a little bit first to make sure you're threading into the same threads. The screws should go in pretty easily, otherwise you're probably cross-threading. The barrel tip does go on only one way. There's a little notch here. That notch fits down into the slot on the back. Okay, before we go too far and reassemble everything, let's test to see if the gearbox still works after those changes that we made. I'm gonna slide the battery in here and just pull on the trigger. Oops, I guess I need to switch it on. Pull on the trigger. And I feel air pressure here, so now it's working properly. Make sure all the wires are kind of back into their place. So I'll be tucked down here in this cable trough. Take the stock, lift up the gearbox slightly, slide it on behind the gearbox, over top of the gearbox. This PCB has to fit inside of this little notch here. Probably the easiest thing to do here is take this top cover, take the PCB. There's slots on either side here. Slide the PCB into those slots. Make sure that the switch is properly captured by the outside switch part. Okay, take that, lift up the gearbox, and then put this over everything. It is not a very easy thing to get reassembled. The feeder funnel, it needs to fit over top of the T-piece, slide down, and then these tabs fit into spaces on the side of the housing. Go ahead and put the hopper adapter back in and make sure that the connection points are on either side of the blaster. Put that back in place. Okay, so now the trigger assembly, put the safety back on. 
put the trigger back in like this. Check to see that that works. Before we put the top housing back on, we can't forget to put these screws back in. So there's three screws that we need to put back in that hold the gearbox down. These screws are 11.6 millimeters long. This one back here is a long one, 19.6 millimeters long. Okay, once everything is back in place, then we can put the top cover back on. So this one is a short screw here in the front, 11.6. Both of these screws in the top are also short screws, 11.5. This screw here in the top rear is a long screw, 19.5 millimeters. The screw in the middle here is a short 11.5 millimeter screw. The screw in the front is a long 19.5 millimeter screw. This screw here in the front is a long 19.5 millimeter screw. The screw in the top of the grip is a short 11.5 millimeter screw. This screw here is a short 11.5 millimeter screw. All three of these screws are the short 11.5 millimeter screws. All five of these screws, this, 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 and this, are all the short 11.5 millimeter screws. And that's it for taking apart and reassembling the Nerf Gelfire Blaster. Hopefully yours still works after doing all this. This is not an easy blaster to take apart and put back together. Specifically, it's not easy to put back together because there's so many intricate things going on. If you have any issues, make sure you just watch the video carefully. I got everything to work. Everything works fine, putting it back together. So in single fire mode, it's shooting pretty good. 185, 174, 160 these hopper blasters you have to shake it once in a while 178 154 155 162 171 142 181 135 150 181 182 174 165 182 162 162 181 161 149 161 159. So on single fire mode, it seems to be shooting on average about 10 to 15 FPS higher. Maybe the max is about 20, 25 FPS higher than, than with the uh, previous stock spring. And let's see on full auto what it does. So on full auto, we're getting 172, 168, 160, 114, 161, 183, 180. Again, 180, 163, 164, 177. 180, 160, 181, 168, 183, 163. So it's shooting between about 160 and 180, which is pretty good. So the rate per second, the fire rate per second is down to 9.5. With the stock spring, it was at 10. And that's because it takes a little more force to push the spring back, so the motor goes a little bit slower. So there's a tiny little bit less of rounds per second, but not a huge difference. I think that the higher FPS more than makes up for the 0.5 rounds per second slower. The accuracy is still pretty good though. So overall, switching out the spring in the Nerf Gel Fire from the stock spring to the slightly longer spring that comes from the Gel Blaster Surge Gen 2 or Gen 3 makes a substantial difference in the FPS. In fact, it's shooting a little bit stronger than those surges, and it doesn't affect the rounds per second enough to make a difference. So I think that's a great upgrade for the Nerf Gel Fire.